Hi book lovers, welcome back to my channel. I have yet another big book haul to share with you guys. Oh my gosh, I got some exciting arcs, but also the special editions this month were insane. I am so excited to share everything I got, so let's just jump into it. As usual, I like to start off with the arcs that I got. These were the ones that I got in October. This first arc is the one that I'm probably the most excited about. This is Gothicana by Rune. If you have heard of this book, you probably already know that it came out a couple years ago, but it did recently get picked up by a publisher. It got picked up by Bramble, so we're getting this brand new hardcover. The first printing has these beautiful purple edges. So the publisher did send along this arc with this beautiful new cover. It's a gothic romance. It's like dark academia. The heroine attends this mysterious and dark university and the hero is one of her professors. I have read it. I actually read it for my book club a little while ago but I remember liking it. It's definitely the perfect kind of romance to read during the Halloween season even though I know that's already passed. But look at how beautiful the inside of this looks. Oh my gosh. So each chapter gets its own gorgeous image. There are so many of them and they all fit perfectly with this book. So the new edition of the hardcover is coming out next January. So like two more months. And like I said, the first printing will have sprayed edges. I also got this arc of Waiting for the Flood by Alexis Hall. This is also another republished book. The new edition comes out in January. It's an MM romance. It's about a man who lost the love of his life and finds love again. Also the new edition includes never before seen content and exclusive bonus material including a new novella called Chasing the Light. Okay yes so this is basically two novellas in one because this first part is the waiting for the flood novella and then this second half is Chasing the Light. This cute looking book is called The Takeover by Kara Tanamachi. It's an enemies to lovers office romance and yes it does mention the hating game. Okay I love the first line of this blurb. Sometimes when you ask the universe for your soulmate you wind up with your hate mate instead. The heroine makes a wish on her 30th birthday to find her soulmate but she gets her high school nemesis instead. It's been 10 years since they've seen each other but it looks like things heat up between them so this one does sound fun. I do love a good office romance. I haven't read this author before but now I want to. And then this one is an arc of This Spells Love by Kate Robb. I've been hearing some good things about this one. It's this paranormal witchy rom-com and it sounds really good. It's a debut romance. It's friends to lovers. The heroine she just got dumped by her boyfriend so she casts a spell to try to erase him from her memory except the spell kind of goes haywire and she winds up in this alternate reality where she never dated her ex and her best friend now has no idea who she is. So she's trying to get him to remember her again and also try to get him to kiss her. I just love the idea of the alternate reality thing. I'm kind of surprised we don't have more romances like this. But yeah, I'm excited to read it. Hopefully it is really good. And then this last arc that I got is Fish Out of Water by Katie Ruggle and it's got this super cute looking cover. The back says why date a mountain man because he knows how to pitch a tent. So this is a mountain romance. The heroine sister she disappears while on a hike one day so she decides to go on that same hike to try to find her. It's set in the Colorado Rocky Mountains. The hero is the local hermit. He's this grouchy survival expert who she asks for help and apparently they have to share the same sleeping bag so that sounds fun. Before I get into the rest of this video I wanted to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor SideChat. SideChat is an amazing new app that I've been having so much fun with. It's basically an anonymous Twitter but it's just for all things book talk and bookstagram. You can talk book regs, rankings and reactions, you can make memes, and pretty much post about all the latest book news on this app. It's fantastic and hilarious like anytime you open up this app you can see 
all the funny memes that people make about their favorite book characters. So as you can see, you can post your book memes and also make some discussion posts. So here's how you can download SciChat in a few ways. You can go to your app store and download SciChat there, or you can use the link in my description below. My link will get you exclusive early access to their book community using code BOOKLOVERS. Like I said, it's super fun. I'm excited to see everyone's posts on SciChat. A big thank you to SciChat for sponsoring today's video and back to the rest of this video. I also did get a bunch of new romances that publishers sent my way, like these two holiday romances that also came with some goodies. So this one is the new Julie Murphy and C.R. Simone co-write. It's a Holly Jolly Ever After, which is the sequel to A Merry Little Meet Cute, which I adored last year. I am so excited to get to this one because it's about yet another Christmas movie where the main characters are stars in, except this time it's not some squeaky clean Hallmark movie. It is very, very steamy. The heroine used to be like a Hallmark sweetheart, but now she is diving into the deep end. And the hero is another member of the boy band that this series is about. And he had just recently got viral in a bad way because it was a sex tape. So the book also came with this cute little ornament. It's got the title on one side and it says Santa aims to please on the other. And then this holiday romance is a new one from Tessa Bailey. This one I have already read. It was cute, pretty unique. The main characters are children of members of this former band. Band. They go on reality TV to try to get their parents back together in their band. And the swag that came with it is this cute little beanie. It says, slaying my TBR. And this is me wearing the beanie. <laughs> And then this one is Friends Don't Fall in Love by Erin Hahn. The heroine is a country superstar, but when she sang this protest song at a concert, her career tanked. Five years later, she wants to make a comeback and she asks the hero for help. He is a good friend of hers and he's also her former fiance's co-writer and bass player. So this one has friends to lovers and country music. I also got one of my most anticipated reads of 2023. This is King of Greed by Anna Huang. This is the latest book in the Kings of Sin series. It is the groveling romance, though I haven't read it yet so I can't speak on the grovel just yet. But the publisher sent over the book and this beautiful art print of Dominic and Alessandra. It's their marriage and trouble romance. I don't know why I've been holding off on reading it. I will get to it soon, but I just have a lot of things to do <laughs> before I can get to this one. And then here is this new publisher edition of Ben and Dusted by Lila Sage. This one was a former indie book that got picked up by a publisher. It got picked up pretty quickly, I think. Like the book only released this year and it's already with a publisher and the paperback is out. I actually just started listening to this one in audio. My library has the audiobook, so I figured why not? Let's read it this way. It's been okay so far. I can't say that it's anything unique now that we have a plethora of small town cowboy romances. It is also a brother's best friend romance, but nothing's really been standing out to me about it except for this cover. I also got Love Redesigned by Lord Asher. This one just came out and I just finished reading it. It was so so cute. It's this enemies to lovers romance between childhood rivals who kind of became something more in college but then that got ruined. So they do hate each other again and the heroine returns home to their small town which is the same town where Final Offer was set at. It's Lake Wisteria and yes we do get a Cal and Alana cameo here. This was great though. I had a lot of fun with it. I am so excited for more in the series and also look how cool this is. The publisher sent this sort of newspaper article about the main characters. It says Lopez v. Munoz, fender bender or a failed assassination attempt. It's talking about the first scene where the main characters reunite at the very beginning, but I love it. It's Wisteria Weekly. There's also this super cute postcard that says, Welcome to Lake Wisteria, home of Dahlia Munoz, celebrity interior designer and reality TV sensation. And then on the back, it says, Truth is, I'm not sure why Dahlia Munoz is back, but nothing good can come of it. Nothing good at all. I also got a couple new releases from Berkeley. I love this one. It's the new publisher edition of Corrupt by Penelope Douglas. I mean, okay, I'm not in love with this new cover just because it looks a bit too simple, but 
I'm still excited to have this in my hands. If you know me, you know how much I am a Penelope Douglas fangirl. So I want to get my hands on all the editions of their books but yes this is the first book in their Devil's Night series. The whole series did get picked up by Berkeley like a bunch of their books got picked up so we're gonna get some new covers. This Corrupt Edition also has a bonus scene. It's a Valentine's Day scene with Rika and all the boys except Damon because He's still on the run but I read it and I just remembered how much I love these characters and this world so so much. And then this one is Cold Curses by Chloe Neal. This is the latest book in the Heirs to Chicagoland series. I still need to catch up on the series. I haven't read anything past like the first one or two books. I love the Chicagoland Vampire series back in the day and this series is the spin-off of it about the second generation. And I actually love the beginning of the series so I need to continue with it. And here is the beautiful paperback of Hunt on Dark Waters by Katie Robert. It's the start of a new fantasy romance series with pirates. The heroine is a witch and she falls through a portal landing in a different realm and she's fished out of the sea by the pirate hero and she joins them on his ship. And this one is the new Nalini Singh thriller. It's called There Should Have Been Eight. It's about this group of friends who go on this getaway weekend together and there's some questions because there are seven of them there and there should have been eight. Denise Williams has a new book out called Technically Yours. It's a second chance office romance. The main characters met and fell in love almost a decade ago and now they reunite because the hero is now part of the board of directors at the heroine's company. Also it is a STEM romance, the company that the heroine works at. It's about coding. Another book I got is The Predictable Heartbreaks of Imogen Finch by Jacqueline Ferkins. This is a new to me author the heroine here. She has experienced heartbreak her entire life but when her secret high school crush comes back into town he decides to help her win at love. And then this book is Filthy Rich Vampire by Geneva Lee and it's got some pretty gold foiling on the title. It's a fake dating vampire romance so I already kind of love it. The hero is a very eligible vampire bachelor. He's expected to find a wife even though he doesn't want one so he asks the heroine for help. She is this human cellist and she agrees to become his fake girlfriend. I also got the new Julie too. This is fancy meeting you here. It's opposites attract when an always the bridesmaid florist and a grumpy caterer makes business with pleasure. So it's a wedding romance between a bridesmaid florist and a caterer who work together for the same wedding and also the hero is the heroine's friend's younger brother. I got these two new Elsie Silver books. Her Chestnut Spring series got picked up by Bloom so here are the new covers for books two and three. Heartless is book two and Powerless is book three. I've only read the first two so I have read Heartless. It is my favorite one so far. It's this fantastic single dad romance, falling for the nanny romance, and then Powerless is Jasper's book which I really need to get to. The main characters were former childhood friends and it sounds super angsty. I also got Never Wager with a Wallflower by Virginia Heath. This is a historical romance. It sounds like it's enemies to lovers. The heroine works at this orphanage and right next door is the gaming hell that the hero just bought. The blurb says, while Venus and Gala had lock horns and her malevolent orphans do their darndest to sabotage his dreams. Can either of them take the ultimate gamble and learn to love thy neighbor? I also got another Alexis Hall book. This is his newest release, 10 Things That Never Happened. It's a fake amnesia romance. The hero, one of the heroes, just got fired by the other hero and he accidentally hits his head and pretends that he got amnesia so he doesn't remember getting fired. It's part of the London Calling extended universe so somehow related to boyfriend material. I also got a couple of fun non-romances from publishers. This gorgeous hardcover is the official Bridgerton guide to entertaining. Look how beautiful 
it looks. And the back cover too. Like they are just milking everything Bridgerton related. So we have some recipes, how to host your own brunch, picnic, tea party, game night. And throughout the book you have scenes from the series. I am so excited about this one. It's the latest volume in the Laura Olympa series by Rachel Smythe. It's volume five. We're on five volumes already. Wow. I started reading the series like couple years ago during the pandemic and fell in love but I never continued with it or never really finished it so I am not cut up at all but I do love having these hardcovers and then I also got the 10th anniversary edition of Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. It's got this cute Christmassy special cover. The artwork on it is embossed and also look at these sprayed edges it says read to me sweetheart and there's also some designs on the top and bottom the publisher sent these cute little stickers too and look at these cute little end papers it's adorable i actually have not read this book i've always wanted to it's been on my tbr since it first came out i've only read eleanor and park from rainbow roll and I fell in love with that book, but that was ages ago when I was still a teen. So who knows if I'll ever get to fangirl. At least this one is a new adult romance, like it's set in college, so it's not out of my wheelhouse just yet. I also got this box from Entangled. It says, To Kill a Shadow. This box is so nice. The book inside is To Kill a Shadow by Katherine Quinn. It's a YA fantasy romance and it's out later this month in November. And then look at this fantastic box from Jennifer L. Armitrout's publisher. It's for a fire in the flesh, obviously. Inside is a fire in the flesh candle, a decorative, skull with a crown. Here's a little notebook with sticky notes and tabs, a bookmark, some jewelry in this pouch. It's a necklace of a wolf howling. It also came with this um, dragon pet and this was supposed to be its leash. Like it's just a foam dragon. It's cute in theory but I don't really know what to do with it. And of course here's the book. It's the third book in the Flesh and Fire series. I still need to read book two so I will not be reading this blurb. I also got some books from some indie romance authors like this package is from S.L. Scott. Ooh look at this tumbler. It's this metal tumbler. It says I prefer my romance with a twist. It feels pretty heavy duty so that's awesome. Here's a pen, a little sticker packet, and here's the book. It's Forgot to Say Goodbye by S.L. Scott and look what's inside. It's like one of those library cards when you borrow something. I love it. It says the borrower's name. That's me. So this one is a surprise pregnancy romance. The main characters had this no strings attached fling. She got pregnant and now he is back in her life. And then I also got One Dirty Night by Pepper Winters. It's an erotic circus romance, which I am so intrigued by. It's also a pretty short book. It's only about 200 30 pages. So it's short and steamy, which means I need to get to it. And then this package has some Lauren Blakely books. I didn't even know she had some hockey romances come out. This is Puck Yes, and this one is Double Pucked. It came with this cute little hockey pencil. This part is the eraser. These are some stickers and let's see which one is book one. Okay Double Pucked is book one in the My Hockey Romance series. It's an MFM Roomies Two Lovers spicy hockey rom-com. So it's why choose one heroine two heroes. The heroine finds out that her boyfriend is cheating on her so in revenge she steals his VIP hockey tickets and it's through these tickets that she gets to meet with two of the hottest and NHL players and of course they end up double pucking her. So these sound super fun. I had no idea Lauren Blakely had hockey romances, let alone why choose hockey romances. And then Kate Brownberg sent me her F1 romance, her new F1 romance off the grid, which is perfect timing because Formula One is happening right now or at least it's coming up for the Vegas one. So the hero is racing in Formula One and the heroine's family legacy is Formula One. And then for some new books that I ordered, I got not one but two editions of King of Greed. This one is the Barnes and Noble exclusive edition. It's got the gold foiling on the title and the cover has a slight 
yellow tinge to it. It's honestly not a huge difference from the original, but there's also some exclusive bonus content as well, though I don't really know what it is. And then I had to get myself the Walmart exclusive edition. I couldn't find it on my own Walmart, so I had to find it online from someone, but it arrived. It's the exclusive illustrated edition with eight prints within the book. So this one is the same as the art print that I showed earlier. Here's Dominic and Alessandra looking super cute. Them at the library and then this one has Dominic looking very sad. Some cute couple-y art and their wedding. So yes, now I do have <laughs> three editions of King of Greed. And these ones just arrived, so technically they weren't part of my October haul, but whatever, I'm still gonna include them, cause why not? My hardcovers of Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros and the holiday edition of Fourth Wing finally came. I haven't started Iron Flame just yet, so I'm trying to avoid all the spoilers. A lot of people have been getting some messed up copies. I've seen so many misprints online, but thankfully mine look pretty okay. It's got the solid black edges, which I'm a little annoyed by. I definitely would have been that reader who would have preferred to wait a little bit longer to get some sort of design on the edges. But yeah, they are here and they are looking very pretty. And this last book that I ordered before I get into all of my special editions is the Waterstones exclusive of Fall of Ruin and Wrath by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I absolutely love this book. And since I saw there was a Waterstones exclusive edition of Fourth Wing, I use that as an excuse to order this one as well to save a bit on the international shipping. But here is the exclusive edition. It's got these blue feathery sprayed edges. If you haven't read it yet, it is the start of a new fantasy romance duology. It's only two books, thank god. It was so much fun though. I love the main characters. The romance does get pretty hot here, at least hot for JLA, and I am obsessed with this hero. He does have some darker tendencies, but that's exactly why I loved him. Okay, now we can get into all of my pretty special editions. Are you guys ready? Because I have some epic ones to show. First off, I recently went to Love in Vegas at the end of October and I did pick up a few signing special editions. This first one I literally got just because I love this cover so much. It is absolutely stunning. Megan Brandy could not have picked a hotter cover model. This is the Blackout Special Edition of Tempting Little Thief by Megan Brandy. Have I read this one? No. Did I get it just because of this cover? Absolutely. I don't even know what this book is about, honestly. It might be a dark romance, but the model is also inside the book. And the other special edition that I got at the signing is the Lancaster Prep Duet by Monica Murphy. It's a chunky paperback because it's got two books in one. So the two books here are Things I Wanted to Say and A Million Kisses in Your Lifetime. I've only read A Million Kisses. That one's the more popular one. It did recently get picked up by a publisher, but I couldn't resist getting a copy of this. And then let's go with Tate James. These are the Haiti series special editions. I love everything Tate James, so I couldn't resist. This is book one, Seventh Circle. It's got this gorgeous red. Book two is Anarchy in this pretty green. Here is book three, Club 22. The series is another reverse harem why choose romance series from Tay James. And book four, Timber. This series is set in the same Shadow Grove world as Madison Kate, which I also do love, but I'm super happy to have these in my hands. I do also have some more Tate James special editions. These are the ones from Mystic Box. I am in love with these. This is another series that's part of the Shadow Grove world. Okay, first up, some pretty art prints. This one's a little spicy with a butt crack showing. And then these are the two special editions, hardcover special editions of the first two books in the Valenshek Legacy series. I think there are three books in the series, or there's supposed to be three, so there might eventually be a third special edition to match, but this is book one, Heist. I love the silver foiling here, and then the author's signature on the back, and foil too, and then these are the sprayed edges. Book two is Forgery. Look how pretty this one is as well. It's so shiny. I love it. These are the sprayed edges. So you can see the spines lining up. 
one and two and these sprayed edges lining up as well. This is the one series in the Shadow Grove world that I haven't gone to yet. I've read Madison Kate, Hades, and The Guild, but this is a series that I've been waiting on for. Like I usually like waiting for Tate James to finish her series before diving in. I don't know when the series is complete or if it is already completed, but if it's not yet, and hopefully soon because I do want to start reading it. Next are these gorgeous Carissa Broadbent special editions from the Arcane Society. They did the Nightborn duet, so book one is The Serpent and the Wings of Night, and book two is The Ashes and the Star Cursed King. So these are the dust jackets. There were a lot of complaints about the original hardcover, like the naked hardcover artwork, so the company did come out with these dust jackets. These are the gorgeous sprayed edges. The foiling on all these is so nice. And there also is more artwork on the other side of the dust jacket, which is probably my favorite part. So this is book one, The Serpent and the Wings of Night. You can see the heroine, Araya, on the cover of the alternate dust jacket, and then the hero on the back. This is the dust jacket for book two. It's got all that purple and then silver foiling. It's so, so pretty. And these are the sprayed edges. And this is the other side of the dust jacket. Same artwork, but it has rain on the front cover and Araya on the back. You can see these are the edges side by side, but let me show you what the original hardcover artwork looks like as well. This is the artwork that everyone was complaining about, but personally I was like, that looks good to me. It's artwork of Rain, and this is what the back looks like. And then Araya on book two, looking stunning. Loving all the gold foiling here. So these are looking pretty. There's also some gorgeous art prints and a pin. I finally got some special editions from Bookish Box. They have been very behind on everything, but they're finally getting stuff out. So this one is the Birthday Girl special edition that I ordered, Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. This part is actually the reverse dust jacket, but this is a side that I like more. You can see these are the sprayed edges. They went with the, an 80s retro vibe for the special edition. Like it's the same for the end papers as well. This is what the front of the dust jacket looks like. It's got the birthday cake right here with the candle and the naked hardcover is all pink with this gorgeous holographic foiling on it. You can see the spine and a piece of cake on the back. This is one of my all-time favorite books, so I couldn't resist getting a copy. I know I would have regretted it if I didn't get it. And this is the special edition of Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. They did a naked hardcover, no dust jacket, but it came with these metal corners. And this is the sprayed edges. Here are the Dragon M papers. Here's the spine, and this is the back of the hardcover. It also came with some very pretty page overlays. This is Violet. This one is of Zayden. This gorgeous one is of Tarn. And of course they had artwork of Andarna. I also got two boxes from Hello Lovely Box. This first one is their annual Halloween spooky box. It came with three books and some goodies like this green mug. It says Creep Caffeine Create. There's this gorgeous makeup pouch. It has skeleton making a hard hand, a bone pen, a cute little sticker. It says me when I read a really good book kind of dead, kind of alive. And these are the three spooky books. They're usually like paranormals or monster romances. This first one is Bitten by Death by Holly Roberts. It's a vampire romance. The second book is Lady Venom Takes a Mistress by Cat Blackthorn. It's a gothic lesbian romance. And this third one is Mantras and Minotaurs by Ashley Bennett. Obviously a Minotaur romance and he's also a single dad. And then the other Hello Lovely box is the Bouquet box that featured A.L. Jackson. I think she was the summer box or the fall box. But here is some purple themed swag. There's this cute little fanny pack, a face mask that says bookworm on it, a Romance Landia candle. It says cozy blankets, neck kisses, and white tea with a hint of fig. Okay, 
that smells really good and this is the A.L. Jackson special edition it's more of you it's got this cute illustrated cover and this gorgeous pink and the bouquet box also comes with two mystery authors one of them is Laura Pavlov this is on the shore it's clearly a football romance and the last author is B. Celeste this is a special edition of the truth about heartbreak and it's got such a pretty pretty cover unfortunately I kind of hated this book but what can you do and then my last box is the box that I literally screamed at when I finally got it in the mail it's the Jabri PR box for the Bonsa Thai series and oh my god you guys this box is everything. I am amazed by all the things inside this. First off, it's packaged beautifully. I mean, I kind of ruined it because I opened it already for an unboxing, but it's still gorgeous. Okay, so the first thing that you see is this. And then there are some gorgeous pins. This one is of Ollie, the heroine. The second one is of Griffin who is on book two. And this third one is of North, who is my favorite hero. The series, if you haven't read it yet, which I highly recommend you do, it's a fantasy paranormal romance series and it's reverse harem, why choose? There's one heroine with five guys. Here are some holographic stickers of the three characters, some pretty bookmarks and all the artwork in this packet. I won't go through them all, especially not the not safe for work ones, but here is artwork of the whole gang. This one is gorgeous. There are all of them here as well. Here's Ollie and her shadow pup, some couple art prints, more Ollie being epic, and some very not safe for work ones like this one his whole dick is out and then this one i'm sure you can guess what they're doing and if that wasn't enough there's also a bonsai tie candle it says gods and shadows absinthe and black apple and the inside of it is so so pretty you can see there's a moth on the inside here to match with the theme of the original covers this villain era stand that does light up i just don't have an outlet near me with this short cord so i can't show it but it comes like in different colors and then of course i have the stunning pr paperbacks oh my god you guys they are so beautiful. So these are the gorgeous special editions. This artwork is just so stunning. So book one is Broken Bonds. You have Ollie on here. Here's a skull on the back. Book two is Savage Bonds with Griffin on the cover and his owl on the back. And book three is Blood Bonds with Daddy North on here with a snake on the back. I love these editions so, so much. Thankfully, if you are interested in getting these covers, they will be available for sale in hardcover sometime next year. It's just that these paperbacks are exclusive for the PR box and I could not be happier with these. Oh my god. I'm obsessed. And that's it for my book haul for October. These are all the books that I got last month and they were so so amazing. If you've read any of these books, let me know your thoughts. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye!